So Christians like me who believe that salvation is by faith alone, and so because it's by faith alone, of course your works do not save you, but also it's the fact that your works do not prove your salvation. We are always bumping heads with the people who can sometimes be saved or sometimes not, oftentimes not, but could possibly be saved, who say that of course your works don't save you, but if you have genuine faith, then you will have some works. And Christians like me will often ridicule these people for having a worldview that doesn't really make any sense and that's contradictory, but I've been thinking about it and I'm not, I'm not converting to that side, don't worry. <laughs> But I want to just say that I have come to an understanding of what they mean. And so it's not, it's not as contradictory as we might think. And so I'm going to try to bridge the gap so that we can better understand each other. Because you can't really have a proper argument or debate or discussion with someone if you don't even really understand what they're saying. And so I want to just kind of help the Christians like me um, understand the point of the other people better so we can better um, analyze and attack the argument. So people who say that salvation is by faith alone, but faith is never alone, a better way of saying what they're saying is that, you know, salvation is not paid for by works. You know, works are not the payment for salvation, but works are the receipt of salvation. And so we, you know, both camps are, are in agreement that salvation is not earned or paid for by works. But people like me, we believe that a person could genuinely have salvation and genuinely have faith and produce absolutely no works at any time in their entire life, while the other camp say that if a person really got saved, then they will have some works at some point. You know, the Holy Spirit will work inside of them. And so whichever side of that camp you're on, or you've never even heard of this argument, then I kind of want to explain why that side is an understandable position, but it is, at the end of the day, wrong. So let's go back to where we both agree. How does someone obtain salvation? By faith alone. Great. But how does someone obtain faith? Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So just to make sure that everybody's still keeping up, that salvation is by faith alone, and how we get that faith is by hearing the word of God. And so the next question is that, okay, if I have this faith, how much of it exactly do I need to obtain the salvation? Mark chapter 4, verses 30 and 31 say, And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? For with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. And so if all we have to have is faith likened unto the size of a mustard seed to get saved and faith only comes by hearing the word of God, then how can someone who does not hear any more words of God but had it, but heard enough and had enough faith to get saved, how will they grow, how will they produce more faith if they don't hear any more of the word of God? It is not a given that everyone who's a Christian will hear more of, of the word of God. If you go to someone's door and you get them saved, but they don't, they don't take the track and you know, they don't take, you know, the church information that you give them. They never set foot in church. They never read their Bible. They don't pray. They don't get around other Christians. How are they supposed to grow? And if their faith isn't growing, then how will you ever see on the outside that they have the faith and a likening unto this would be like if a person has cancer, a person could have um, a malignant tumor growing inside of them. But while it's small, it's not really wreaking any havoc. It's not really showing up in their body, but it's going to, it's going to become more evident. It's going to, you know, have more effect as it gets bigger. But when it's really small, it's not really going to, you're not really going to see it on the outside. And so if a person can get saved with only having the amount of faith as a mustard seed, then you're not going to see it on the outside. And if they don't, if they don't hear any more of the word of God, you're never going to see it because they're never going to grow, but they still have it. They still had enough to get saved. And of course, we all believe that salvation cannot be lost once you have it. And so, um, you can have enough faith to get saved because, you know, you got, you heard the word of God and, and produced that little mustard seed, but you still might not have enough 
you know, if you don't hear and if you're not active in church and if you're not doing what you're supposed to do as to walk in Christ, this is why there's a whole lot of commands and Bible verses about being a disciple, about walking in Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Why would this verse even be in there if, if this idea that, oh, a person is going to have to relinquish to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to force them to produce works. No, it's not true. The, the little baby Holy Spirit that they have inside of them is going to, you know, talk to them and, and try to encourage them to do good things, but they can quench the Holy Spirit. They don't have to be obedient because the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. So you have to choose to, to live a good Christian life. You have to choose to have a good relationship with God. You have to choose to pick up your cross daily and, and, you know, and walk after Christ. And if you don't choose to do that, you will not have the fruit and you will not grow. You will stay on the milk of the word. You will not go to the strong meat of the word. And so this is why a person can be 100,000% saved a child of God and immediately go to heaven as soon as they die and not have any works and not produce any fruit. It's not that they're not saved. It's not that, you know, they're a false convert. It could be, you know, it all depends. We don't know. That's the whole thing is that we won't be able to know. But God who sees all, God who is all knowing, he sees their heart and he sees whether or not they're really saved or not. But we won't know. And this is why the most misconstrued verse in the whole Bible is even there. That faith without works is dead <laughs> because as people... We won't be able to see who's saved and who's not. And and we'll never really be able to know who's saved and who's not on this side of heaven. We can just go off people's actions. That's why in the verses above, faith without works is dead. It's talking about, you know, how can you, um, you know, what good is it to someone who's hungry and needy and you tell them, you know, oh, go and be warmed and filled and you didn't actually do anything for them. In the context, it's already talking to Christians. And right before the, the famous verse, it's talking about the relationship that you have with other people. And so... As a Christian, you know, I want other people to know that I'm a Christian. I want to show my light. I want to shine my light and not put it under a bushel. And so therefore, I want to, you know, walk after Christ. But that's because I've been taught that. That's because I've read my Bible. That's because I go to church. People who do not read their Bible, people who don't go to church, they're not going to grow. They're not going to produce any fruit. But a, an apple tree that doesn't have any fruit on it is not any less of an apple tree, folks. And so... Um, if you know someone who claims like, oh yes, I know I'm saved. I believe on Christ, but you never see them in church. You never see them reading their Bible. You don't see them praying. They're living very carnally. You know, it's possible that they could be a false convert. I'm, that, that's not off the table, but don't tell them to doubt their salvation. You know, don't put that bad doctrine in their mind and say, I don't think that you're really saved because you're not living the Christian life because living the Christian life doesn't save you. Like we kind of all agreed on that. It's not your works. It is by faith. And so if that person has faith, they could have, you know, their little mustard seed. And that mustard seed, praise God, will take them to heaven. Um, but they might not show it on the outside.